Hello friends, I am Neshek from blogtube.com and today in this video I will teach you how to create a car rental website with WordPress. In this website anyone can come to your website, search for a car of their choice, select the pickup and drop off date, time and location and can make the payment online and book the car. Now before I show you how to create this website step by step, let me first show you the demo website. So first let me show you the exact same website that you will be creating if you follow my step by step tutorial. Now the reason I show this demo website right at the beginning is because I want you guys to understand what is the website that you are going to create in this video, what all are the different features available, how is the design, how this thing works and everything. I don't want you guys to watch the complete 2-3 hours long video and at the end of the video you should see what is the end result. Rather I prefer to show the end result right at the beginning so that you guys can make the decision whether you want to watch the complete tutorial or not. So this is the website that you see on your screen. This is our home page. So if you see every single page will be divided into different sections. And this is our home page. If you see this is how it looks like. Now let's see section by section. So the first section on your home page is the hero section or you can see the search section. So here we have a big title, a subtitle. So this is basically a call to action section. Then after that you have to choose the pickup date, then drop off date. And you can also choose the maker of the vehicle. You can add some more options over here. Now you can add multiple options over here for example if you want to add the option of price over here so you can add that price option as well. So there are many different options that you can enter over here. Then after that whatever you want to choose just select that option and click on find now. Now you will be redirected to the search page and here you can see all the different results. So there are many different vehicles available whatever you want you can choose that. Now we'll see this process later on first let's see the home page. Now coming back to home page now first of all let me explain you this thing and let me inform you this thing that this website is 100% mobile and tablet friendly. So whether you visit and view this website on desktop, mobile phone or tablet it will look really amazing, really professional. No extra gaps here and there, no margin or padding problem, no responsive problem. This thing will look, this website will look amazing on all three devices. Now when we scroll down this is our next section, this is the about section. So here you can enter about your company name. So we have entered this uh, title then after that you can enter some information about your company. You can enter this image. Now when you scroll down you have some features like fast and easy booking, many pickup location, no booking charges. Then when you scroll down we have different products or different cars available with you. Okay so as you can see this is the car, this is the price. Now when you scroll down this is a carousel actually. So you can do it like this. So you can enter multiple cars over here. Then when you scroll down we have another section. So this is the contact section. So if you have any problem, if you have any calls, if you have any doubt you can call us on this number. So all this kind of information can be entered over here. Then when you scroll down you will see the customer reviews. Basically the testimonial section. So different customers giving or telling something positive about your company or about your website or about your service. Then again when you scroll down we will see this option. This is the blog section. So we'll also see how to create different blogs. So blogs will help you to generate some extra traffic on your website. And obviously when you scroll down at the bottom you will see your footer. So this is your home page. We have already seen how the uh, search page looks like. So if you want you can click on this link car listing page. Now you can see all the different cars which are listed on this website. Now if you want this is the grid style. If you want you can also display this in list style. So this is the list view and earlier that you were seeing that was the grid view. Now here as you can see on this page at the left hand side you have all the different results, all the different listings. At the right hand side we have this option, we have this option. So if you want to you can select the pickup date, drop off date. You can select your price range, body type, whether you want to book a sedan or a SUV or a pickup truck, whatever. You can select this option and you will see all the results at the left hand side based on whatever you have selected at the right hand side. Now suppose if you want to book this option or book this car, you can simply click on this car. Now on this page as you can see this is the single listing page or the single car page. So on this page you will see all the details about this car. If you have any doubt you can contact them. So if you don't want to book this car right now you can simply click on this button send details. You can send, send them your information. They will call you back and you can have a chat with them. If you are not familiar or if you have some doubts or something. Then at the right hand side you will see this option. So if you want to book this car this is $45 per day. If you want you can also enter the per hour charge or something like that. So basically I have entered over here per day. Then after that you have to select different options. For example your pickup date and then after that you have to select your drop off date. Now here you can add some more options like you can also add the option of you know pickup location and drop off location. And after that you can click on booking this car. Now before that let me show you this example. So as I said you earlier in the home page in the hero section you can also add this option price range option. 
then after that in this option you can also add this option pick up location drop off location pick up date drop off date some extra services like if you want wi-fi access insurance this will cost you something extra so you can select this option as well so whatever you select for example if you want to pick up location of mumbai drop off location of pune you can select the date for example 24th you can also select the time and everything and if you want something extra for example insurance you can select this option click on booking this car or book this car now you'll see the card page so here you'll see all the different details for example this is the car that you have booked then after that you'll see your start time your finish time your start location finish location then some extra resources after that you can click on proceed to check out and you can make the payment over here so this is how this process works now on this website we'll be creating some extra pages as well for example we'll be creating this contact page so that anyone can come and contact you through this form so anyone can come over here fill in this form and you will get their detail then you can contact them back we'll also see how to create this blog page so this is how your blog page will look like and as i said you earlier blogs are very useful they will help you to generate some extra traffic on your website Alright guys, so this was a very short demo of the website that we'll be creating in this video. And now I hope you guys now have a better idea about the website that you are going to create. If you like the demo website and if you want to create the exact same website, make sure you watch the complete tutorial. And before we start creating this website, make sure to subscribe and click on the bell icon so that you don't miss any future notifications. If you find this video helpful, give a thumbs up to this video, share it with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, WhatsApp and different social media platforms. And if you have any doubts, any comments, any suggestions for me, you can leave them in the comments section below. Now, let's start creating this website. Alright guys, now to create any kind of website, whether it be a car rental website, an e-commerce website, a simple blog, a business website, a membership website, any kind of website, we need two basic things. A domain name and a hosting account. A domain name is simply the name or the URL of your website. For example, nayashik.com, blogdude.com, youtube.com, google.com, all these things are different domain names. And a hosting is basically a computer in which all your website data is saved. So everything that you see on your screen, this entire website with all different pages, all the different listings and everything is saved in a computer. And that computer is running 24-7 so that whenever someone visits your website, they can see your website live. So whether they visit your website from any particular country at any given time, they can always see your website live. So that is basically a hosting. And a hosting is a very important thing for your website. Now literally there are thousands of different hosting providers in the market but we have to be very careful about the hosting that we are choosing because the hosting that you choose has direct impact on your website. So your website speed, your website's performance, the user experience on your website, everything is directly related to your hosting. If you have selected and if you are using a good reliable hosting, your website speed and performance will be amazing. If you are using a cheap crappy hosting, your website speed will be really bad. It will load very slow and the user experience on your website will not be that great. But you don't have to worry about that. You can simply open a new tab and type in blocktoot.com slash sg. SG obviously stands for SiteGround and this link is also given in the video description below. So you can simply click on that link and you should be redirected to this page. Now here as you can see there are three different plans, Startup, Grow Big and Go Geek. Now before we choose any plan and before we proceed further, let me first explain you why did we choose SiteGround. Now as I said you earlier, there are literally thousands of different hosting providers in the market. So why are we choosing SiteGround? Why not any other hosting provider? Now the reason I'm choosing SiteGround and the reason I'm recommending you SiteGround is based on my experience. I'm creating websites for more than 6-7 years now and I'm creating these WordPress tutorials on YouTube for more than 4-5 to five years. And in this time period, I've used and tested many different hosting providers. I remember the first website that I created was using HostGator. Then I moved on to some other hosting, then some other hosting and ultimately I'm using SiteGround. Also because I create these YouTube tutorials, I get hostings for free. So there are many different hosting providers. They approach me, they give me hostings for free so that I can try it. And if I like it, I can recommend it to the people. And because of this, I have used many different hosting providers like HostGator, SiteGround, TMD Hosting, A2 Hosting, Bluehost, GoDaddy, many different hosting providers. And in my experience, SiteGround is the best hosting provider available in the market right now. And that is the reason why I am also personally using SiteGround on my main website blogtoot.com and other websites that I own like nayashik.com, fahem.in and different businesses that I own those websites as well. So all my websites are basically hosted on SiteGround and that is the reason why I am recommending you SiteGround. It's based on my personal experience. 
Now here, as I said you earlier, there are three different plans. Now before we choose any plan, basically you can just select any plan and you can still create the exact same website. But I think first it is very important to understand the difference between these plans so that you know it makes it, it, it becomes easy for you to make the decision and to select which plan should you go with. So first of all, let's see this option. How many websites can you create with a particular plan? So if you select startup plan, you can create one website. Whereas if you select GrowBeek and GoGeek plan, GrowBeek or GoGeek plan, you can create unlimited websites. Now, what does this mean? So basically, if you select startup plan, you can create this one single website, this auto rental or car rental website. Now, tomorrow, if you want to create some other website, maybe an e-commerce website, maybe another car rental website, maybe a blog or business website. If you have selected startup plan, you cannot do that because here you can create only one website. Whereas if you select grow big plan, you can create unlimited websites. So today you're creating this website. Tomorrow, if you want to create some other website, you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to purchase a new hosting plan. You can host unlimited websites in one single plan. So basically you just purchase this hosting plan once and for any future websites that you want to create, you don't need the hosting plan at all. You can host all the different websites in one single plan. Now the next thing that we have to see is the number of or the amount of web space that you're getting over here. So for example, if you select grow big plan, you're getting 20 GB web space. Now let me explain you how much space do you actually need. So if you see this entire website, this entire website that you see on your screen with all the different listings, all the different media images, video, all the different things that are used, all the different pages, this entire website is hardly 100 to 200 MB nothing more than that. So basically if you select grow big plan, you can create literally hundreds of different websites like this one. And even if you create this website and even if you have a very huge website, for example, if you have created this car rental website and maybe you have listed more than 100,000 different cars, still your website will not be more than two or three GB. So you don't have to worry about that. With this plan, you can create many different websites like this. Now, most importantly, this 20 GB web space is SSD space. So basically there are two types of space, HDD and SSD. Most of the companies out there in the market, they use the HDD space. But here at SiteGround, these guys are using the SSD space. And if your website is hosted on SSD space, which is used by SiteGround, your website speed and performance will be really amazing. Whenever someone visits your website, it will load very fast and whenever someone clicks on some other page, whenever someone opens some post or some page, it will also load very fast. Whereas if your website is hosted on HDD server, which most of the hosting providers use, your website speed and performance will be really bad. So that is not what we want. So here at SiteGround, these guys are using this super fast SSD server. Now the third thing that we have over here, this is just to give you an idea about which plan is better for what kind of website. For example, if you see the startup plan, this is better for those websites which has around or which gets around 10,000 monthly visitors. Or GrowBeek similarly is better for those websites which get around 25,000 monthly visitors. And GrowGeek plan is be better or best suited for those websites which get or which generate around 100,000 monthly visitors. Now many people get confused over here. Many people have misconception that for example, if you select GrowBeek plan over here and uh, people think that if, you, if you're selecting GrowBeek plan and if your website is getting more than 25,000 monthly visitors, you will have to upgrade to some other plan. But that is not the case. Even if you have selected grow big plan and even if your website is getting maybe more than 50, 60,000 monthly visitors, still this grow big plan can easily handle that. You don't have to worry about that. And with these plans, we also get some essential features. For example, first of all, we get a free SSL certificate. In fact, we get free unlimited SSL certificate and which is very, very important. For example, if you see this website, if you see my demo website, you will see this lock pad over here, which says that this connection is secure. An SSL certificate is very important. In fact, it is compulsory for your website, especially if you are collecting payments on your website. So in this website, in this car rental website, we'll be accepting online payments. So if you don't have an SSL certificate, you cannot accept online payments and you cannot accept or you cannot make anyone fill in some form. For example, here we have this contact form. If you don't have an SSL certificate installed on your website, no one will be able to fill in this form and send this message. So SSL certificate is very important. And here you're getting unlimited free SSL certificates. We also get free unlimited business email accounts, which means that some instead of something regular like nayer at gmail.com, you can create an email address like nayer at your website name.com or contact at your website name.com, info at your website name.com. So you can create unlimited free business email accounts as well. We also get free Cloudflare CDN, which will improve the security of your website. We also get free daily backups. So even if something happens to your website, you have your daily backup, you can easily restore your website. 
we also get 24 7 support which is really amazing because if you have some problem if you're not able to install wordpress properly if you're not able to you know maybe install ssl certificate properly maybe if you have any doubt anything uh, you know you can simply contact them them you can simply contact the support team and they can help you out with that all right so basically for most of you guys i would recommend you to start with the grow week plan Obviously, because you can here you can create unlimited websites and also here we have more resources than the startup plan. So I would recommend you to start with the grow big plan. If you select this plan, just click on this option, get plan button. Now, when you click on that button, you will be redirected to this page and here you have to register your domain name. So whatever domain name you want, simply type in that thing. For example, if I want to register this domain name, nayashik.com, I can simply type in nayashik over here. And from the domain name extension list, I can select the .com domain name extension. If you don't, uh, if you don't see .com available for your domain name, you can select .net or you can select some country specific domain name, name extension like .in for India, .nz for New Zealand. So you can select this option as well. Or you have some generic options as well, for example, .mobi, .me, .bike, .shop, you know, .blog, .online. So simply enter the domain name that you want to register, select the perfect domain name extension and click on proceed. Now if you have already selected some domain name or if you have already registered a domain name somewhere else, like maybe on GoDaddy, Namecheap, Google Domains or some other website, you can select this option. I already have a domain name. Now type in the domain name that you have registered on GoDaddy and click on proceed. Now when you do so, you will see this page and here first of all, you have to enter your account information. And under your account information, you basically have to type in your email address. So just type in your personal email address over here and after that you have to choose a password. And obviously under confirm password, type in the same password that you have selected over here. Now whatever you enter under account information, whatever email address and password you enter over here, this will become your login credentials. So whenever you want to log in to SiteGround account, you will be asked this email address and password. So this is very important. Make sure whatever you enter over here, whatever email address and password you enter over here, make sure to remember that, write it down somewhere if you want. Then after that, you have your client information. So basically, this is your basic information like your country name, your first name, last name, your address, phone number, all your basic information. Here you can leave these two things, your company name and tax ID. These two things are not compulsory, so you can just leave them. Then when you scroll down, you'll see your payment information. So obviously you just have to enter your card number. So whether it's your credit card, debit card, your basic ATM card, you can just enter that card number, expiry date, the CVV number, which is given at the back of your card and your cardholder name. Now, one thing to note over here that three types of card are accepted over here, Visa, MasterCard and American Express. So make sure you have one of these. If you don't have them, for example, in India, most of the people have the Rupe card. But Rupe card is not accepted over here because it's a domestic card. It is accepted only within India. Outside India, that card is not legal. So if you have something like Rupe card, you can contact your bank and they will, you know, exchange your card with a Visa or MasterCard within seven days. So make sure you have a Visa, MasterCard or American Express card to make the payment over here. Then when you scroll down, you'll see your purchase information. Now here you don't have to change anything. You just have to check everything. For example, under plan, you have selected grow big plan, which is fine. Under data center location, data center location will be automatically selected for you. So based on my location, Singapore is selected for me. If you're from some other location, for example, if you're from uh, USA, a data center location in USA will be selected for you. So nearest data center location is automatically selected over here. Then under period, make sure it is 12 months. Don't change this thing because if you change this thing, you might have to pay some extra money. We don't want to do that. So make sure it is 12 months. Now scroll down at the bottom, tick mark these two things. And if you see the final payment that you have to make is just 71 USD, $71. Now this is really amazing because as I said you earlier, SiteGround is right now currently the best hosting provider available in the market. Now for the best hosting, you're getting your first year of hosting for just $71. And in comparison, if you see some basic hosting as well, if you go to some any regular hosting, even they will charge you more than $100 for your first year. So here, this is an amazing offer. So you can just check everything, go at the top, check everything, whether whatever information you have entered is correct. If everything is right, just come at the bottom and click on this pay now button. Now, once you make the payment, you have to do one thing. You simply have to open a new tab and type in my.siteground.com. Now here you have to enter the email address and password that you have entered in your previous information in your previous step under account information. So under account information, whatever email address and password you have entered, enter the same email address and password over here and click on sign in. Now when you do so, you will see this page and here you have to click on this option, this website's link. So click on this link websites. 
Now here as you can see all the different domain names that you have registered with this hosting plan or all the different websites that you have, that you have hosted on this hosting plan and that you are using with this hosting plan. Now we have registered this option or we have registered this domain name nayashik.com. So we, you will always see your domain name over here whether, we, whether you have registered a new domain name SiteGround or whether you have registered your domain name somewhere else on GoDaddy or some other website. You will always see your domain name over here and at the bottom of this you will see this button site tools. Click on that button. Alright guys, now here there can be two scenarios. First that you have just registered a new domain name with SiteGround which is amazing which is fine. And second scenario can be that you have already registered a domain name somewhere else on some other website like on GoDaddy, Namecheap or some other website. Now if you have registered your domain name on some other website, first you have to link that domain name with SiteGround. So let's see how we can do that. So for that go to that website. So in this example I'm going to godaddy.com. Now sign into your account. And when you do that, you will see all the different domain names that you have registered over here. Now for example, suppose I, if I want to use this option, tritongifts.com. If I want to link this domain name with my SiteGround account, I can select this domain name, click on this DNS link or click on this DNS button which is besides every single domain name. Now scroll down, click on this button, change button. Now delete these default name servers from here. Go back to your account, scroll down. You will see your personal name servers. Copy the name server number 1, paste it under line 1. Copy the name server number 2 and paste it under line 2. Now click on save. Now once you click on save, it can take up to 24 hours to propagate these changes. It can take up to 24 hours to link your domain name with your SiteGround account. So by that time, we can do one thing. We can install SSL certificate on that domain. So to do that, you can simply do one thing from the left hand side, you will see security, click on that option. Now select SSL under that. Now from here, you have to select the domain name on which you want to install SSL. So I'm selecting this domain car2.nayashik.com. Then after that, under select SSL, you will see this option. Let's encrypt. Select that option and click on get and within two minutes SSL will be successfully installed on your domain name. Now SSL is already installed on this domain car2.nayashik.com as you can see. At the bottom you can see this domain name and SSL is currently active on this domain name. Now once you have successfully installed SSL on that domain you can do one thing. You can click on this option WordPress option and after that click on install and manage. Now we can install WordPress on that domain. So to do that first you have to select WordPress or WordPress plus WooCommerce. Basically you should be selecting this option the first one WordPress select that option. Now from here select the domain name on which you want to install WordPress. I'm selecting this domain name car2.nayashik.com then after that you will see installation path leave this thing whatever it is however it is just leave it then after that you will see language make sure it is English uh, then after that you will see this this tick mark this thing will be tick mark already for you starter plugin we don't need this plugin so we can simply untick this thing then after that you have your admin info here first of all we have to choose a username so whatever username you want simply type in that username then after that we have to Choose a password. So whatever password you like, select that password. Enter your personal email address and click on install. Now once you click on install, WordPress is getting installed on this domain name. This process generally takes around 10 to 12 seconds. So we can wait till that time. Alright guys, so as you can see over here, WordPress is successfully installed on this domain. Now you'll see this domain at the bottom. car2.nayashik.com or whatever your domain name is. And besides this domain name, you'll see this button or you'll see this link. Login to admin panel, click on that link. Now a new tab will be open and you will see your dashboard. So this is your dashboard and this is the most important page of your website. Because from this place or from this page you will be controlling your website. So whether you want to create a new post, if you want to create a new blog, if you want to delete some blog, if you want to manage your media, create pages, delete pages, change the style and appearance of your website, you know, add or delete some functionality of your website. So whatever you want to do, you will be doing that from this page. And whenever you want to come to this page, simply type in your domain name and after that enter forward slash WP hyphen admin. So whatever your website name is, for example, website name.com slash WP hyphen admin. Then after that, you land on this page. Now, whenever you install WordPress for the first time on a new domain name, there are a few basic things that we have to do and there are a few basic things that we have to understand. So let's see them. So first of all, from the left hand side, you'll see there are many different options. We'll be using most of them in this website. So first of all, we have the dashboard and this is how your dashboard looks like. 
Then after that at the left hand side you have blogs or you have post. So we'll be using this post option to create different blogs and different post. Then you have media which we'll be using to manage different media if you want to upload some media, some images, some video if you want to delete it you can do it from here. Then we have pages which we'll be using obviously to create different pages for example your car listing page, your search page, your contact page, then comments to manage comments. If, if there is some spammy comments, you can mark that as spam. So you can manage your comments from here. Then after that you have appearance. Click on appearance. Now when you click on appearance, you will see there are few themes which are already installed for you. So a theme is basically the design of your website. For example, right now 2020 theme is installed and activated on your website. Now if you open your website in a new tab, this is how your website will look like because of the theme. Now if you don't do anything on your website, if you don't create any post, if you don't create any pages, don't do any customization, you simply change the theme. For example, right now it is 2020 theme. If I want, for example, let's, let, let, let me do one thing. Let me select this option. Let me activate the 2016 theme. Then again, if I come to this website and refresh it, you'll see this style is completely changed. Now it looks like we have landed on completely different website. Now this is exactly what a theme does. A theme changes the style of your website, the appearance of your website. Now come back to your dashboard and we just need one single theme so we can delete all the other themes. Simply select that and click on delete. In fact, we'll be using some totally different theme. We, we won't be using obviously this 2016 or 2019 theme. We'll be using some other theme because we don't want this boring design. We want to create an amazing website like this one. So later on, we'll be using some other theme. Then after that, at the left hand side, you'll see plugins. Click on that option. Now here by default, you should see one plugin already installed and activated for you, SG Optimizer. Now this is a very, very important plugin because this plugin will improve the user experience, will improve the speed and optimization of your website. And this plugin will be available to you only if you're using SiteGround hosting. So if you're using some other hosting, you won't see this plugin and that is basically what a plugin does. A plugin basically adds some extra functionality and features to your website. For example, right now by default WordPress is not an e-commerce website. But if you want to convert your website into an e-commerce website, you need a plugin called WooCommerce. And that plugin will add all the e-commerce or all the online store functionalities on your website. Like accepting payments, creating products, all those different options. So that is what a plugin does. A plugin adds some additional functionalities and features to your WordPress website. Now from the left hand side, you'll see this option settings. Click on that option. Now, first of all, you have to change the site title. So basically you have to change the title or the name of your website. So whatever name you want to give your website, simply enter that name. Then after that we have tagline. So in tagline, you can basically do one thing. You can explain or you can describe your website in few words if you want. Then after that you have WordPress address and site address. Now by default if you see HTTP over here both at top and bottom make it HTTPS okay HTTPS both at top and bottom because right now if you see this website is not fully secured which means that SSL is not properly installed on this website. So make sure you do HTTPS both at top and bottom. Now make sure you have your personal email address over here. Now tick mark this thing membership anyone can register so that anyone can come to your website they can register on your website and they can become a customer now go at the bottom and click on save changes now you will be logged out of your website you have to log in again using your username and password now again if you come to this website and refresh it now if you still see this not secure you can do one thing you can click on some link on your website any link then after that you will see this secure button or you will see this lock pad over here now your website is 100 percent secure now let's come back to the dashboard. Now under settings you'll see this permalink option, click on permalinks and just select this option, post name from this list, go at the bottom, click on save changes. Now come back to your dashboard. Now whenever we come back to your dashboard, we will always see this useless widget. So here now I don't like these, these are not really useful for me. So I can do one thing, I can click on screen option from the top, I can untick everything. Now later on we'll be using some useful plugins and those plugins will give us some additional some useful widgets and we'll be using those widgets over here. For example those widgets will display the number of sales you have done, the number of bookings you have and how much money you have made this month, all those important information. Alright guys so with this all the basic settings are now done. Alright guys now let's do one thing, let's first change the theme of our website because right now if you see 
This is how it is looking really bad, really boring. We want to convert this boring website into something amazing like this one. So for that, we need a new theme. So you can do one thing. You can open a new tab and type in blocktoot.com slash auto zone. Now this link is also given in the video description below. You can simply click on that link and you should be redirected to this page. So this is the theme that we'll be using to create this website. So if you scroll down, you can see all the different features that is available in this theme. For example, multilingual ready page builder, revolution slider. So revolution slider and page builder, these two things are, these two are basically premium plugins. So you'll have to purchase them. For example, both of them will cost, I guess, $70, but you're getting both the plugins for free with this theme. So if you're purchasing this theme, you'll also get many different, I think, yellow pencil is also a, I think this is also a premium plugin you're getting it for free so with this theme you also get you know plugins for free so you can see this th this is the theme that we'll be using this will cost you 86 dollars but this is a one-time payment which means that you make the payment to you make this 86 dollars payment and you can keep this theme forever so you, do, you don't have to pay it every single year like unlike hosting and everything also, if you purchase this thing, you will get six months of support from these guys. For example, if you have any problem with your theme, if you have any problem installing or importing something, you can simply contact them. You can go to comment section. You can leave a comment over here and they will help you out. So you basically have to purchase this theme. I already have this theme, so I can do one thing. I can hover this and click on download. So obviously, first you have to click on buy now and purchase this theme. If you have done that, Come back over here at the top right corner you'll see your username however that and click on downloads now here you will see all the different themes and plugins that you have purchased from here you have to select this option auto zone go and click on the download button besides auto zone theme and select this option installable wordpress file only don't select this option all files and document no, documentation select this second option installable wordpress file only then after that you also have to install this option or you have to download this option the license code so select the fourth option license certificate and purchase code download that as well okay so we have both this option i can cancel this because i already have the theme file now you have to do one thing you have to go back to your dashboard click on appearance click on add new upload theme and select the file that you have just downloaded so we'll do one thing i'll select this file click on open click on install now now, as you can see, your theme is getting installed. And by that time, we can do one thing. We can open the other file that we have downloaded, this license code file. So open this file. Now, when you open this file, you will see your item purchase code or your license code. So we have to enter this code. So you can simply copy it from here. And when this theme is successfully installed and activated, we'll have to enter this license code over there. So let's see that. All right, guys, now as you can see, this theme is successfully installed. Now we can click on this activate button to activate this theme. Now, when you do that, first of all, you will see that there are many different plugins that you will get with this theme. So you can click on this option. You can click on this link, begin installing plugins and you can tick mark this thing. So instead of installing everything one by one, you can do one thing. You can tick mark this thing. It will select everything from this list. Go to bulk action, select install and click on apply. So this will install all the plugins at once for you. Right, guys. Now, as you can see, all the different themes are successfully installed and activated. Now you can go at the bottom and click on this option. Return to requ required plugin installer. Now you'll see this option. I think there are many different plugins that you don't actually need. But right now you can just tick mark everything click and uh, activate everything from here. So click on activate. All right, guys. Now, as you can see, all the different plugins are successfully activated. Now you can do one thing. Click on plugins. Now you can hide this notice. Welcome to AutoZone. You can hide this notice. You can dismiss this notice. Don't dismiss this one. Welcome to WooCommerce. We have to run the set of wizards. So don't dismiss this notice. We'll do that. First of all, come to plugins. I think there are many different plugins there. First of all, if you see any plugin or any theme requires any update, click on update and first update those themes and plugins. So let's do that first. Now, first of all, let's run the set of wizard for WooCommerce. So click on this button, run the set of wizard. Now, for some reason, if you don't see this button, you can do one thing. You can select this option. You can, you know, if you see your URL bar under your URL bar, after your website name, type in this thing, your website name forward slash WP hyphen admin forward slash admin dot PHP question mark page is equal to WC hyphen setup. You will see this page. Now here you have to enter where is your store based or where is your business based. So I'm selecting India because my business is based in India. Then you have to enter your address. 
select your state name whatever your state name is and you have to select all you have to choose the currency so if you want to use indian rupees some other currency for example dollar pound whatever currency you want to use you can select that i'm selecting us dollars so i'm selecting this option now click on let's go if you want you can tick mark this thing and click on continue now you can uh, integrate paypal with your account which is very important so i'll select this, this option i'll tick mark this and click on continue now uh, whenever a theme is based i think uh, i always prefer those themes which are based on woocommerce because in woocommerce you have many different payment gateways for example if you want to use some other payment gateway like stripe or pay you money or insta mojo there are many different payment gateways available you can use them as well so in this example we are using paypal now we are not shipping anything so we can just untick this thing and click on continue now this will recommend you a few additional plugins we don't need them so i can click on this button or click on this link which is given at the bottom skip this step then they will recommend you this jetpack plugin which is not very useful at least for us in this example so we can again skip this step now click on visit dashboard and this complete setup is now done now as you can see we had skipped the jetpack plugin but still it got installed so first of all let's uninstall this plugin so click on plugins go to jetpack which is over here deactivate and delete this plugin okay you can simply delete this one now go at the top and you can dismiss these notices now come back to your dashboard now as you can see because we have installed wordpress we get two very useful uh, widgets over here so in this widget it, it will display the net sales this month uh, awaiting orders or awaiting bookings you can say number of uh, bookings that you have done how much money you have made this month so you can see all the different statistics over here now we have done the basic setup the quick setup so if you click on pages right now you'll see there are few uh, pages that are already created for you the cart page checkout page my account page privacy policy and shop page so these pages are automatically created for you because of the quick setup that we just did now we have to do one more thing so if you see at the left hand side you have woocommerce how about that and click on settings we have to do the payment settings right now but uh, if you see this option uh, address line 1 address line 2 you can basically enter your address over here now selling location basically which all country is this service available for so uh, from for me this uh, service is available only for a specific country and that is india okay so i'll type in india over here because if someone from usa or some other country comes to my website tries to do a checkout they will not be able to do that if they enter their address from some other country for example uh, if a person from south africa comes tries to do a booking or uh, they cannot do that because i'm enabling booking only for indian people so i'm selecting india because this is not a regular you know e-commerce website that you you can ship your product to any part of the country this is a car booking website so you have to select only a particular region now if you want to enable taxes you can uh, select this option enable taxes and calculations now go at the bottom and click on save changes now because we have enabled taxes and calculations now you'll see a new tab tax tab click on that tab now whatever tax you want to create first first of all let me maximize this thing for example in india we call it gst the tax name is gst if in your country it is vat you can just enter vat over here and when you do that you'll get a new tab at the top gst rates click on that click on insert row under country uh, code just enter your country code for india it is in leave the state code postal code city come to rate now enter the tax rate for example on this thing uh, if the tax rate is 10 percentage i can enter 10 percentage i can untick shipping and click on save changes and with this your tax changes are now made now we can do one thing we can leave shipping because we are not shipping anything we are not uh, shipping any you no know, physical products we can just go to payments and now we can integrate paypal now before that if you also want to enable cash payment you can tick mark this thing cash on delivery and we can change the title because we are not delivering anything so i'll just change the title to cash payment okay now click on save changes now again if you come back to payments we have this option paypal checkout click on manage now we can manage or we can enable paypal on our website so to do that first you have to go to your paypal account so go to paypal.com log into your account now you'll see this link over here seller tools okay if you see this link simply click on this link seller tools link you will see this page you will see this option api access and besides that you will see this update link click on that update link now you should see this page so here we have different api options just scroll down 
and select this option NVP slash SOAP API integration. Click on manage API credentials. Now you'll see this page and here it will display your username, password and signature. So you simply have to do one thing, click on show. It will display or and it will show you your username copied from here. Come back to your website, enter under live API username. Okay. Similarly, you just have to hide this thing now. Now show your password copied from here, paste it under password, show your signature copied from here and paste it under live API signature. Obviously, I'll have to hide these things. But I guess now as you can see, I've successfully copied and pasted my username, password and signature. Now you can scroll down, select this option landing page. Under landing page, instead of login, select billing. Go at the bottom and click on save changes. And with this, your payment settings is also done. Now you can go to accounts and privacy and tick mark these three things. First of all, allow customers to log into an existing account during checkout. Allow customers to create an account during checkout. Allow customers to create an account on the my account page. Now go at the bottom again, click on save changes. Now go to advanced and make sure under cart page, cart is selected under checkout page, checkout is selected and under my account page, your my account page is selected. Now go at the bottom, click on save changes. And with this, your basic WooCommerce settings are also now done. Now we can do one thing, we can start creating car listing. So first of all, let's open our website in a new tab. And this is how your website looks like right now. Now let's create our first listing. Like here we have, we have created many different listings. Let's create a similar listing with uh, like this, uh, Fiat Bravo. All right, so this is how your single listing looks like. Now we can copy the same listing. So come back to your website. Now let's see how a single listing is created. So for that, you can see this option at the left hand side autos. How about that and click on new auto. And from here, you can create a new listing. Now, before we create a new listing, there are a few things that we have to do. First of all, if you see, uh, we can enter the title and everything. And here you have auto details. And there are many, many, almost so many different details, which are most of them are not very important, not really necessary. So we don't have to do all these things. So first of all, we have to manage these things. So whatever tabs or whatever fields you want to display over here, you can select that whatever fields you want to hide, you can select that. So whatever information you enter under these fields, it will display over here. Okay. Under your specification, like make model, made your mileage version. So you can see the same options over here, made your uh, doors, mileage, price, model, you know, auto version, all these different things. So I don't want these many options. Uh, I, I can hide some of them. In fact, I should be hiding most of them. So let's first do that before we create a listing. And also we have to create different models. So because we have to select a model, whether it's a uh, SUV, whether whatever it is. So we have to create different models. We have to create body styles. We have to create equipments, all these different options. Okay. Before we create a listing. So let's see how we can do that. So first of all, I want to control these details. I want to control these fields. So for that under autos, you will see this option settings, click on settings. Now there are general options over here. We'll see them later on. First click on auto fields. Okay. Now here, now as you can see, almost all of them is tick mark over here. So you have to tick mark which one is required, which one do you want to show on your website? Which one do you want to display in grid and which one do you want to display in list? Now, first let me explain you what is this display in grid and display in list. So if you see your listing page, for example, let's go to car listing. Let's go to listing page. So this is displaying in grid. So here three things are displayed over here. As you can see these mileage uh, speed and everything. So whatever you want to display under this grid style, you can tick mark this thing display in grid. So it will display by default. It will, it will display your mileage and horsepower. And here, as you can see your mileage and horsepower, that is exactly what is ge getting displayed over here and display in list. If you see this website in a list view, if you see this listing in a list view, here, as you can see under list, your fuel, horsepower, mileage and engine. So these things you have to tick mark. Okay. Your mileage, whatever you want to display in list. So we have to control this thing. So in list, I want to display these two things, auto make and auto model. Okay. So car make and car model. Then first of all, what all do you want to show? I want to show the year. I don't want to show the mileage. Uh, maybe mileage we can show not the fuel, uh, engine is fine. Horsepower is also fine. No transmission, uh, drive doors, maybe not drive also door seats, color fine. Not really important. I can untick these things. Condition is fine. Purpose. 
so i don't i'm i am just unticking those things which i don't want to display on my website which are not according to me not really important price sales price these are not really important as i said you earlier this theme is made for three different or multiple purposes so this sale price uh, this price is for auto dealer website we are not creating an auto dealer website so we can tick mark all the bottom things warranty currency seller first name last name we are not selling anything over here so i can untick everything i don't want to display them now because we have unticked these things we also don't want to make them required Okay, so whatever you have untick, make sure you untick uh, that same thing from required tab. Okay, so because we have untick this, we have we are unticking the required tab. I hope you're getting me. Okay, then I don't want this purpose. I don't want the price. Untick everything at the bottom. All right, so I'm displaying only these things which are tick mark over here, and all these things are required. You have to enter these information for sure. Now, what all do you want to display in list? So we are displaying one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine things, maybe 10 things. Let's see, maybe not 10. I just want to display eight details. I don't want to display this thing, stock status. I don't want to display the condition, maybe. I can just uh, do maybe, yeah, condition is required. So I can tick mark this thing. I don't want to display the drive. Okay, I just want to display auto make auto model year mileage fuel engine horsepower in this list okay in this list form so once you're done with your choice you can just go at the bottom and click on save or maybe we have to click on this save button let's see yeah we can click on this save button now this list will be updated on this page so if you again go to new auto under autos you will see now this list is so small because you have updated this list now you can do one thing you can create body styles equipments uh, you know model and everything from here so if you want to create models basically you can create them from here as well but if you want to create multiple you can do it from here for example if you want to create models you can go to models come over here enter different models if you want to create body styles go to body styles and create different options for example under body style you can just enter suv okay you can give it an image so i'm giving so there is a link given in the video description below if you click on that link you can download all the images for free so whatever images i've used to create this website all these car images also these body type images i'm giving everything for free so if you click on that link you will download a zip file and when you unzip that file you will get all these images okay so we have to use these images to create this website so under body style we have entered the name suv for this you can also use the image of SUV icon that I've given you. So let's open this media, not this one. Let's open this media folder. And here you will see, let's search for SUV. Here it is, SUV mini, select this icon, click on open. Now select this image and click on use this image. Now click on add car body style. Similarly, you can create different body styles uh, like this one, sedan, uh, uh, you know, mini car, pickup, all these different options like here. For example, let's create another one sedan. Select this option, go to image, select this sedan image from here. Here it is, select this option, click on open, use this car. So these images, first of all, click on add car body style. So these images will be displayed over here like this option. Okay, vehicle body type. So if a person wants to see only sedans, they can click on sedan uh, image and they will now see only the sedans. So this is how this filtration option works. I'm just resetting that. So this is how you can create it. Similarly, you can just go to models. You can create different. So in model, how you can create this thing is first you can enter the brand name, for example, Mercedes and under brand name, you can make the brand name parent category and you can un enter different car models, for example, Mercedes E class, Mercedes C class, something like that. So let me show you how you can do that. So under uh, name, you will just type in Mercedes. So under name, I'm typing Mercedes Benz. Now go at the bottom, just click on add auto model. Now we can make this parent and we can do something uh, inside this. So I can do one thing. Now I can select uh, maybe E class. Okay. Now under parent, I can select Mercedes Benz. Now click on add model. Now, as you can see, everything now will be under this car. So similarly, you can add some other car models and you can create, uh, create it like this. Okay. Just the way I've shown you now, because we have created these options. Now, similarly, you can just go to equipments. You can click on equipments and you can create different equipments as well. Now, equipments can be some additional things. For example, air conditioner, uh, you know, parking sensor, something like that. 
So let me just enter that. So I, maybe this car has parking sensors. So I can type in that thing, click on add car equipments. Maybe this car has leather interior. So maybe we'll just enter leather interiors. So something like that. Okay. So if you want, you can enter these options now because we have entered everything, almost everything over here. Now we can create our first listing. Now you can go under listing, click on new auto. Now I'll just do one thing. I'll copy this option Fiat Bravo. Let me bring it over here. Now this will be your title, the name of the car. So I'll select this title. Uh, paste it over here. Then after that, you have to enter detail about this car. So it will be displayed in this manner. Okay. So I'll simply copy it, paste it over here. Then you have to go at the bottom now uh, auto version. So whatever version it is, you can just type in that thing. For example, whatever it is, then made here when, what is the made here? You can select that made here. How many doors, uh, you know, what is the auto condition, new driver, whatever it is, mileage, you can enter all those different information engine, horsepower, you can select all these different options, seating capacity, you can select everything from here. Now at the right hand side, you will see model. Obviously this is not Mercedes Benz. So we'll create a new one. We'll just name it Fiat. We'll just name it Fiat. Now click on add auto model. Now we'll make it uh, parent and we'll create a new one. Bravo. Now we'll select parent auto model Fiat. Click on add auto model. Now you'll see Bravo under Fiat. Now you'll, you have to select what is the body type SUV or sedan, uh, what all different equipments are available. And if you want, you can add some more equipments from here. So if you want, you can do that from here. Now when you scroll down, you'll see some more options like contact info, uh, custom tab one, custom tab two. So if you want to add some ad additional tabs and if you want to give some additional information, you can do that. Now at the bottom, you have this banner option. So this banner option will be something like this. Let me show you. So if you see this website at the bottom in the banner, this is the banner. So whatever title subtitle you want, you can, you know, enter that subtitle and subtitle over here. I'll just copy and paste it over here. Now go at the top and just publish this post or just publish this auto. And with this, you have just created your first auto. If you open this in a new tab, this is how it will look like. Okay. So we forgot to enter the featured image. So let us do that very quickly over here. It is over here. Featured image, select this set featured image, upload the featured image, whatever image, for example, let's select this option, click on open set featured image, go at the top, click on update, come back over here, refresh the page. And here you have your featured image. Now you can see all the specifications related cars, all the different options are now available. Okay. All that, if you go to features, you'll see all the different features. If you go to contact reviews, if you go to, if you want under contact detail, if you want to add something, you can just add those information under this tab, contact info, you can name, you can enter your name or whatever you want to display under contact info. Now, if you see one thing, we don't see that booking option at the right hand side. Okay. We don't see that booking option at the right hand side. Whereas here we can see that booking tab. So we have to enable this thing. So you can again, come back to this tab edit auto. Now at the right hand side, you will see this option when you scroll down. Okay. Here, here it is auto layout. So what sidebar do you want? Do you want sidebar at the left or right? Or if you don't want any sidebar, you can select that. Do you want to show the specifications? Yes, we are showing that. Do you want to show the related cards? Do you want to show this option share option? So uh, we are showing the related cards, but because we have created just one car, we cannot see any related car. We are displaying this share option. We are also displaying the specifications. Then do you want to display the description tab and everything? Now here, if you see this option is hidden booking button, we have to show this option. Now go at the top, update it again, come back over here, refresh the tab. Now you can see this option booking this car. If you click on this, this is a pop-up. I don't want this in a pop-up style. I want this in a simple form style. So if you want to change this style, you can go back to your website under autos. You will see this option booking click on booking. Now, first of all, booking style, instead of this pop-up, I want sidebar, select sidebar, click on save. Again, if you come over here, refresh the page. Now you have this sidebar. Now we haven't created any locations. Okay. So pick up or drop off location, the pick up date and this thing will obviously work, but we haven't created any locations. So if you want to create this location, first of all, if you want to change the title, I don't want this booking this car. I want the button to say book this car. Okay. Click on save right now, as you can see, it is saying booking this car. If I refresh this now, it will say book this car. Okay. Now we can add some locations from here. So I can click on add location. 
maybe one location can be mumbai another one can be pune all the uh, you know nearby locations nagpur obviously you'll add locations according to your you know preferences now click on save changes now if you want to disable weekdays for example if you if you don't want to uh, enable any booking on sunday you can select sunday okay if you want and if if you want you can select a working time from which time to what time you can select that option as well i'm not doing anything over here now click on save and if you want to accept booking only after two or three days you can tick mark this thing for example if you type in two and click on save come over here and if you refresh this page now if someone selects pick up date they will have to select date a uh, day two uh, two days after this the current date for example today is 20th of december i cannot select 20th december and 21st is december i'll have to select 22nd december because we have we are selecting this two days op option over here so the booking option will be available only two days after the current date so if you want you can select that option as well now if you want to add some custom fields like uh, we don't have this over here so instead here that you can add some custom fields for example insurance can be one so under slug just type in insurance under name also type in the same thing now under description you can describe whatever it is i'm i'm just entering the same option now option whether you want to charge a lump sum amount a total amount or whether you want to charge per day so i'm selecting total amount now click on add field now you'll see a new option over here okay and you can uh, tick mark the price over here so for this maybe the price is uh, uh 10 dollars for insurance now i can click on save and if you want to create one more for example a few more for example extra driver so uh, under slug i'll type in extra driver under name i'll type in the same thing under description also i'll type in the same thing and here i'm i'm selecting day click on add field so if you want uh, to book a, a book an extra driver you'll have to pay first select extra driver from here you will have to pay 10 dollars per day click on save so you can select these options as well so this is how you can uh, tick mark this thing and this is how you can control it now if you come over here and if you refresh this page now you'll see under pickup location you will see some locations under pick uh, drop off location also you'll see these you'll also see these extra resources so everything is working fine till now all right guys now let me do few basic things and few basic changes right now so i can do one thing i can come back over here under autos you will see settings click on settings now first of all side currency if you want to use some other currency you can select that we are using usd now list style i want to display this in list not in uh, the grid way so i'm selecting list now thousand separator decimal separator you can select this now car listing page we haven't created it L later on we'll create the car listing page so you can just you know just leave these right now now text after price right now it is just displaying the price it is uh, we don't know whether it is per day per hour so i'm i'll type in per day over here so after this price it will now say per day okay now you can uh, select the text uh, after price, uh, select the price range, uh, slider min minimum year. You can select all these different options. Now you can go at the bottom and click on save changes. Now if you come over here, refresh the page. Now as you can see, it says $100 per day. All right, I guess so we are missing one thing actually over here. I was wondering for some time that where, this, where did this $100 per day come from? So we are missing something over here. We haven't entered the price on this listing. And I think by uh, by mistakenly I have disabled that field. So under uh, autos, go to settings. Now go to auto fields, and we had, let's see the price here. Here it is. We had untick this option over here. So make sure you tick mark this thing. Go at the bottom, save this option. Now go to all autos. Edit this option. Now when you scroll down, obviously you should now see this price. And let me make it maybe. $25 per day so I'll select this option click on update come over here if you refresh this website now it will say $25 okay so I was missing this thing all right guys now with this all the basic settings are now done we have seen how a listing is created how a car listing is created now let's see whether this website right now is working fine or not whether anyone can come to your website whether they can properly make a booking or not so we, I'll do one thing I'll open a new tab I'll simply first of all copy this link this listing link and i'll open this in a new incognito window now when we open a website in a incognito window what happens is 
we are logged out of this website right now in this window we are logged out and we are visiting this website as a normal visitor okay we are not logged in we are not the administrator over here so i'm just a normal person visiting this website right now maybe i want to book this car my pickup location is mumbai my drop off location is pune i want to book this on 23rd you can also select the time and my drop off is on 24th i want extra driver i'll select this option and click on book this car now you'll see your card page and this is how your card page will look like now one thing because you see this sidebar over here i don't want sidebar in my card page and my checkout page so i can do one thing i can go back to my dashboard click on pages select your card page click on edit now scroll down and you should see this option sidebar style make it full width okay just make it full width click on update similarly go to all pages do the same thing with your checkout page so click on checkout page edit this page again make this thing under sidebar style make it full width update this page similarly for your uh, let's see my account page i guess let's go to this option here yeah, here it is my account page select this option click on edit scroll down and make this sidebar type full width now if you again come back to your incognito window refresh this website now it is a full width window and this looks much better now you can see your detail over here this is the car you're booking start time finish time uh, start location finish location and you're getting extra driver so you can see the payment of final price over here now you can click on proceed to checkout now you have to fill in this form very quickly so because we are not logged in we first we have to sign up so let me very quickly enter a few details over here okay so when you enter that detail you you'll notice that under country you cannot change the country name you have to select uh, india okay you cannot select some other country because you know in the woocommerce settings that is what we have done and here you have to enter your email address that is compulsory because you're doing this for the first time and you can tick mark this thing if you want to create an account using this information okay now you can see your final uh, price at the bottom now i want to select cash payment click on place order your account will be created and a new order will be placed and you will see this page okay your total amount and everything will be given to you okay all this information is given to you now this order is placed by this customer now if you come to your website if you come to your dashboard now whenever you receive a new order you'll always get email from your website you will get a notification on your email and when you come back to your dashboard you'll see some uh, new order is present so you can click on one order you will see this option click on this option you will see all the different details of the person billing address and also the phone number of this person now you can contact this person and you can do rest of the other things if you have already received the payment and when this transaction is done when this thing is done when this person is completed this uh, booking you can select this option completed and you can update this page okay and this transaction will be settled all right, guys. Now let's see how we can create our home page. Okay, so we we have to create the home page, the car listing page, the blog page, and also your contact page. So let's see how we can now create these different pages. All right, guys. Now to create your home page, you have to come back to your dashboard, and now from the left hand side, you'll see pages, hover pages, and click on add new. Now here you have to give it a title of home, obviously because it is our home page. Now from the right hand side, you'll see page attributes. Under that, you'll see template. Now under template, select home. Click on publish. Now, if you open this uh, page in a new tab or if you view this page in a new tab, this is how it will look like. Now, there is one problem over here. If you see the URL bar, it says your website name slash home. We want, uh, we don't want this slash home because for your home page, if you see the demo website, we don't have any slash home over here. So basically what is happening over here is we have created a page. We have named it home. But this is just a regular page which is named home. So just by naming any page home, it does not become your home page. We have to set this page as your home page. Because if you see right now, if you click on this logo, you are redirected to some other page. And right now, this is your home page. We have to set this page that you have just created as our home page. So to do that, you have to come back to your dashboard. From the left hand side, you will see settings. How are that? And under that, you will see reading. Now, as you can see right now, your home page is displaying your latest post. We want to display a particular page. So select this option, a static page. Now under home page, select the home that you have just created. Now click on save changes. Now again, if you come back over here and refresh it, you'll see that the slash home from the URL bar is gone. And even if you click on this icon, this logo, you're still on the same page, which means that this page is now set as your official home page. Now to make some changes on this page, we'll click on pages from the left hand side. 
select the home page which is over here click on edit now to edit this page or to design this page we will be using wp bakery page builder so to use that you have to click on this button back end editor now we will be designing this website we will be designing this page section by section so as you can see this is our first section the hero section so to add a new section you add a new row so click on add element select this row now inside this row we have to add all the different elements so the first element that you have over here is this heading element so to add a new element you will click on this plus button which is inside this row click on this now search for heading select this option heading option now let's make it center align let's give it a title of uh, you know best auto rental prices and let's give it a subtitle of this option okay practical and convenient auto hire as low as $15 per day now if you want to design this thing first of all we have made it center align because this text is aligned uh, in the center now if you want to design this text just go to typography now this first option is for title font okay which is this one then we have subtitle or the content font so designing option for subtitle is this one which is at the bottom now first let's design the title so for the title I want this to be quite bigger so I'll make the font size as 60 pixels all right and we will make it a little bit bolder so I'll select 500 font weight all right we also have to change the font color but but we'll change that later on let it be as it is right now or let's do one thing let's just change this to white color okay if you don't see this option just type in FFF you will get this white color code now scroll down we have this subtitle now for subtitle I want this uh, I want to make this 18 pixels and I want this font weight to be 300 because if you see our subtitle the font this font is a little bit lighter and this is quite bold quite heavier font so I want this font to be lighter and this one to be bolder so for this we have selected 500 weight and for this we are selecting 300 weight now for this color I'm selecting again white color so I'll just select this white color from here now you can click on save changes now if you just update this page and if you view this page right now let's see how it looks so we have our title and subtitle but we we cannot see that because the color of that that text is white now let's do one thing let's add that image in the background uh, this image so that we can see the text which is on top so to add an image in the background you can select this option this pencil button edit this row now first of all you have to select you have to stretch row and content but I'll do that later on because first I want to explain you why we stretch row so first let me do one thing when you scroll down you will see this option equal height tick mark this option and we want our content position to be middle why because if you see the demo website we have some space a equal amount of space at top and bottom and the content is in the middle so that is why we are doing it if you don't do this content middle everything will be at the top and you will have all this space at the bottom we don't want to do that now we have to go to design if you want to add some padding margin if you want to give a background color or something like that you can do it from here now go to theme option now if you see this section at the bottom of this section we have this V shape okay if you see we have this V shape so if you want the uh, if you want this V shape you can go at the bottom select this option show section decor now under this option select bottom V decor and for color select white color okay now go to the fourth option which is casuara option now for the background type we want a parallax image in the background so i'll select parallax image because if you see uh, when you scroll up or down the image is fixed only this content is getting scrolled so that is the parallax effect so i'm selecting parallax image now let's upload this image now again i'm just to remind you guys that there is a link given in the video description below if you click on that link you can download all the images that I have used in this website for absolutely free so we are selecting this image click on set image now I want this image position to be center center and I want this size to be cover which means that we want to display the full image so select this option click on save changes click on update come back to this website refresh it okay so we have that image uh, at top as you can see but we have to do some changes over here first of all we have to give it a height so that we can see this image completely okay this height is quite small right now so I'll select this option this time we'll select this column okay so click on this pencil button edit this column now go at the bottom activate this thing minimum height make it yes and select the minimum height of 900 pixels click on save changes click on update come back to this website refresh it now as you can see we have a nice 
a height of 900 pixels and our content is now in the middle. Now we have a lot of space at left and right and that is the reason why whenever you add anything in the background, whether it's color, whether it's some background image, you should always stretch the row. Okay, because you will always have this container space from left and right. So that is the reason why we do that. So if you come back to this page, click on this pencil button, edit this row, select this option, stretch row and content, no padding. Click on save changes, click on update, come back over here, refresh it. Now as you can see, this looks much better. Now let's do one thing. Let's add some space first of all over here in the middle. And after that, we can add this search bar. So first of all, we'll select this pencil button, search for space. Now there are two options per, for space. First is empty space and second option is this spacer section. We'll be using both this option and I'll always explain you which one should you be using when. In this example, we are using space, empty space, this normal one. Select this option and let's add space of 50 pixels over here. Click on save changes, click on update. Now why did we use empty space over here? Because we want to have 50 pixel space between this uh, title subtitle and between this search bar so as you can see we have this space this is the 50 pixel space now I want this space in all the devices if you see this website in a uh, in a mobile phone let's see how it looks so this is how it looks now here also as you can see uh, in middle we have 50 pixels space now this is whenever you want to add different spaces for different uh, devices for example in mobile phone you want to add maybe 20 pixels space in in middle in desktop you want to add 100 pixels in tablet if you want to add 50 pixels space in the middle you you should be using the other element that we'll be using later on but whenever you want to add similar space in all devices you can use this sim simple option empty space now to display that search bar click on this small plus button and search for vehicle search which is over here select this option now style, you can just uh, show this simple style. Now what all do you want to display? So in this example, we are displaying the pickup date, time and maker. So if you want pickup or uh, time, if you want, as you can see in this example, you can also display the uh, price range. Okay. Then vehicle body maker. I don't want to display the body, but I do want to display the maker of the vehicle. So all these different option, whatever you want to display, you can tick mark that. Now click on save changes, click on up to it. Now come over here, refresh the page. Now as you can see, we are selecting this much and all these diff different things are now displayed over here. Okay, so this is how it looks like. Now if you see this website in a mobile phone, this is how it will look like. If you see this website, maybe in a desktop or in a tablet, this is how it will look on a tablet. On mobile phone, this is how it will look like. So I think this looks perfect. We don't need any changes over here. So as you can see, this is 100% mobile and tablet friendly. Now let's come back over here and let's create our second section. So create another section to create next section. You will always click on this big plus button and we'll add another row over here. Now in the second section, we have two columns. So whenever you have multiple columns, it is better to add another row inside a row. So we have added this row inside this row. We can add another row and we can divide this row into two columns. So whenever you have multiple columns in a row, you can do this option. You can add a row inside a row. Okay. So that is exactly what we are doing over here. Now in this example, first of all, at the left hand side, we have this title. Okay. We have this heading. So I'll just copy it from here. Come back to our website. Uh, click on this plus button, search for heading. We'll select the same option heading option. Now, uh, text align this time it is left we don't have to change that now just put in the title we don't want to display any subtitle because uh, before displaying subtitle we have to display this divider I'll show you how we can create this divider but here we don't have to enter any content just go to typography and let's design this font so for size I want this to be 24 pixels and I want to give it a line height of 1.5. Okay, by default it is 1. I want to increase the line height a little bit. And I want to make it bolder. I am selecting 700 pixels because as you can see, this text is pretty bold. So I am selecting 700 pixels over here. Now font family, for whenever you are creating title, you should always select title font. Okay, for all the different titles, for example, this is a title. This another one, this is a title. So for all the different titles, your font so your font family will be similar. So we are selecting this option for font style. We are selecting title font. Now by default, we have this color, uh, 333. Let's make it 222. Now 333 is a little bit lighter shade of black. We are selecting 222, which is a little bit darker shade of black. So select this much. Now click on save changes, click on update. 
come over here, refresh the page. Now when you scroll down, you have this option over here. Now what we want to do is we want to add a little bit space over here. So click on this plus button, search for space and select this empty space again because we want similar space or same space in all devices. I'm adding 14 pixels over here. Click on save changes. Then after that, now what we, what we have done is we have created this title. We have added this small space. Now we have to add this, uh, in, uh, this option. So for this, we are using separator. Click on this plus button, search for separator. Select this option, line separator. Now this line or this separator, as you can see, is very small. So we want to select a very small size over here. So for that, I'll come over here. Line height will be one. If you increase this, uh, as you can see, this line is very thin. If you increase this, this will become very bold. Now the size or the width of this thing. So I want this to be very small. So I'll just select 30 pixels, which is very small. Later on in this example, if you see when you scroll down here, we are using the same option, but we are increasing the width. Right now it is quite small. So I'll just select 30 pixels. Okay. Now you can also control color and everything. So I want, I don't want this darker color. I want gray color. So just enter CCC. You will get this gray color. Now text align or line alignment. I want left align because as you can see, this line is aligned or this line is towards left hand side. So we are selecting left align. Now you can just click on save changes. If you click on update, come over here, refresh the page. You will see one single line. Now we have to add another line over here. But between that line, we have a very small space, as you can see, very, very small space. So first, let's add that space. Click on space or just search for space. Select this empty space and just add two pixels, very small space, two pixels over here. Okay, now we'll get that small space. Now, instead of doing this line separator again, I'll simply do one thing, copy this one, bring it at the bottom. And we just have to do one option or one change over here. We just have to add some margin at left hand side because as you can see at left hand side, we have some gap. So I'll add margin at left of maybe nine pixels. Okay. Now click on save changes, click on update, come back over here, refresh the page. Okay. Now as you can see, it looks very much similar to your demo website. So this is how it is done. Now again, uh, below this thing, we have some space. So I'll do one thing. We have to always save some time. So instead of doing this, I can just copy this uh, empty space of 15 pixels, bring it uh, 14 pixels, bring it at the bottom and increase this space to maybe 30 pixels. Click on save changes. Okay. Then after that, we have this simple text. So I'll just copy it from here. Now come back to this website again, click on this plus button and search for heading. Select this option heading. So heading, we are using heading always to enter some text. Text align will be uh, left, which is fine. Now we don't want to enter a title. We want to enter this sub content. So I'll just paste in this text over here. Go to typography. Now let's design this thing. So first of all, it is left aligned, which is fine. Now we want to design this subtitle. So we'll come back to this section. This section is for title. We are not entering title. This is for subtitle. So come back to this section. Now line uh, uh, font size is 14 pixels, which is fine. I want to increase line height to 1.7. Now what is line height? If you see, between each line, there is a nice amount of space. So that is what a line space is between this line and this line in middle. As you can see, there is nice amount of space and gap. That is what a line height is. So if you want to increase this furthermore, you can add two, 2.5, 2.2. I'm adding 1.7 and I want this font to be lighter. So I'm selecting font weight of 300. Okay. And for this, I'll select theme font. Okay, this font is, as you can see, totally different. So whenever we are using or whenever we are adding some text, simple, normal text, we should be selecting theme font. Now, now I also want to change the color of this thing. Right now it is dark black color. I want to make it very light gray color. So I'll select this 777. Okay, now we can click on save changes. Now let's do one more thing. Let's add this big space at the bottom. So for that, again, I'll copy this empty space, bring it at the bottom and I'll make it 50 pixels. Okay. Instead of 30, let's make it 50 pixels. Click on. Okay. Then after that, we want to add this a uh, sign. Okay. Signature. So for that, I'll click on this plus button, search for a single image, select this option, single image. That is just a simple image. So let's upload that image, which is over here. Select this image, click on open. Now click on set image. Now I don't want this to be thumbnail size. I want this to be full size. So I'll just type in full and image alignment is left, which is fine. Now click on save changes. Then after that, 
I think for left column it is done. So we can just click on update, come back to this website, refresh it. Okay. Now as you can see, it looks perfect on the left hand side. Now let's add this image at the right hand side. So we'll come back over here, select the right hand side column, click on this plus button and again search for single image or maybe let's wait, let's wait. Instead of searching for single image, if you see over here, if you refresh this page, now when you refresh the page and when you scroll down, as you can see, there is some animation to this image. So whenever you want to add some animation to any image, you can do one thing. You can select this option. First, add this option animation box, I guess. Yeah, animation block. First, add the animation block. And after that, you can add whatever content you want An animation type, maybe flash, maybe fade in left. So I'm selecting fade in left over here. Click on save changes. Now inside this, you can add this image so that you can get that animation. Now click on this plus button. Now again, obviously we'll search for single image, select this option and let's upload this image, which is over here. This is the one select this image, click on open, click on set image. Now for this also, I don't want this to be thumbnail size. Thumbnail size is very small. It will basically decrease the size of the image. I want this to be full size. Okay. And this time I think it is right aligned. So let's select right alignment. Now you can do one thing, go at the bottom, you will see extra class name over there. Type in this thing, I M G hyphen, no hyphen responsive. Okay. So select this option, click on save changes, click on update, come back over here, refresh the page. Now, as you can see, you have this animation. So if you want that animation, you can do it with animation block, or if you don't want that animation, you don't need to add that animation block. You can simply add that image. Now let's do one thing. Let's add some space at top and bottom because here, as you can see, we have very little space, almost no space at top and also almost no space at bottom. So let's add some space at top and bottom. So we'll do one thing. We'll come back over here. Now this time we'll be using another one. So first of all, I want space both at top and bottom of this option. So I don't, I don't want to use this plus button. I will be using this plus button, which is inside the main row. So click on this plus button search for space and this time select this space section. Now here, what I want to do is for desktop and tablet, I want to add 90 pixels. So I'll just type in 90 for desktop and tablet. Now for mobile phones, 90 is too much. So we'll be adding only 20 pixels. Okay. Now click on save changes. Now, as you can see, space is added. Now copy this space and let's add this at top as well. Okay. So we have some space at top. We have some space at bottom. Click on update, come back over here, refresh the page. Okay, now we have decent amount of space at both at top and bottom. If you see this website on a mobile phone, let's see how it looks. Now, as you can see on a mobile phone, we don't have 90 pixel space. We just have small space over here. If you would have added 90 pixels, there would be a lot of space over here. So that is the reason why. And that is when we use this option. Okay. Now, normally when you want to display only one space throughout all devices, you use the empty space. When you want to use different spaces on different devices, you use, you use this option. All right. Now with this, the second section is also completed. Now let's move on to third section, which is this one. So for that, again, we'll click on this big plus button, add a row. Now, as I said you earlier, when you have multiple columns, it is always better to add another row inside that row. So click on this plus button, add this row. Now divide this inner row in three columns like we have over here. Okay. We have divided this in three different columns. Now in the first column, first, what we have is we have some space at top, then the icon, then space, then title space. So uh, then after that, we have this uh, divider, which we have already created. So we won't be creating this divider again. We'll simply copy it from top, paste it over here. Then we have some simple text. All right, guys. So first of all, come back to your dashboard or uh, come back to this page. First of all, we have to add this space. So search for space. This time we will be using empty space because we want to use simple 60% 60 pixel space on all devices. Now click on all uh, save changes. Then after that, we want to use this icon. Okay. This icon. So for that, we'll use, uh, we'll click on this plus button, search for single icon and select this option, single icon. Now, first of all, search the icon. So in this example, first is this speedometer icon. So we'll search for speed and you will get different icons. So uh, in this example, we are using this one speedometer, select this icon. Scroll down. We don't want to use any, uh, def we don't want to use the default icon. 
styling we want to have our own icon styling because we want to increase the size of the icon by default icon is quite small 18 pixels i want to make it bigger 70 pixels when you use or uh, when you increase the icon size you should always increase the uh, icon background size so let's make it 70 as well so make sure both top and bottom is 70 70 all right now icon color so for this i want to add this color uh, just paste in this color dc 2d 1 3 okay dc 2d 1 3 you will get this red color then after that you have margin select this margin and icon alignment we want to select center now click on save changes let's see how it looks right now click on this uh, refresh the page now as you can see we have space we have the icon so we are going good now let's add another space at the bottom because as you can see space icon then again we have some space so we'll save some time copy this empty space bring it at the bottom we don't want 60 pixels that too much uh, we'll just add 30 pixels over here click on save changes then after that we have the heading okay this simple heading I'll, I'll copy it from here click on this plus button search for heading and select this option uh, we have center align paste in the heading go to typography and let's let's design this thing so instead of 19 let's make it 18 pixels line height of 1.6 and i want to make it bolder so i'll select 700 over here so select 700 and i don't want this color 333 i want this 222 color okay you will get a little bit darker black shade then we can click on save changes then after that we have a little bit space as you can see then we have the divider so again copy the space bring it at the bottom instead of this 30 i want to make it 20 click on save changes now instead of creating this uh, uh this line spacer again we can do one thing we can come over here we can i don't think we can right click over here but we can copy it so i'll copy this line separator bring it at the bottom over here okay then if you remember below this line separator we had two pixels space Okay, then we'll, we can click on save changes. Then again, we'll copy the line separator, bring it uh, at the bottom. And we have to add nine pixels margin. And we also have to make them center align. So align center and margin left, nine pixels. Select the top line separator. Let's make it center aligned. Click on save changes. Then after that, again, we have some space below that thing. So we'll select this option, empty space of uh, 30 pixels, bring it at the bottom. Now let me first update and let's see how it is looking right now. Let's click on refresh. Or so I can see two problems over here. First of all, this is looking quite bolder and there is no gap. We have added the gap. Let's see. We have added this 30 pixels gap. First, let's fix this heading. So select this heading. And we forgot one thing. Instead of font family, as I said earlier, whenever you're using title font, you should always select title font. So select this option, save changes, click on update. Come over here, refresh the page. Okay, now looking much better. Let's increase the gap over here. So I'll come, I'll select this gap, which is over here. Okay, empty space below the icon. Instead of 30, let's make it 60 pixels. Click on save changes, click on update. Come over here, refresh the page. All right, so for some reason, I think that space is just not working. I don't know why, but we can do one thing. If if you if you're facing some problem like this, you can delete that space, and you can add the regular space. Okay, this one spacer section. But here, when we we have one problem, we have to add just 30, 30, 30 everywhere. So it doesn't make any sense. Let's see whether this is working. Let's bring it below this uh, between this icon and this setting. Click on update. Come over here. Refresh the page. Okay, now as you can see, it is working. So if you have any problem like that, you can use this space. If that space is not working for some reason, you can use this spacer section, all right? Then after that, we have this heading, simple heading. Now, because this heading style is very much similar to this one, we can simply do one thing. We can copy this heading from top. Okay, we can copy this text from top and we can paste it over here. So here is this text, heading one, select this and bring it at the bottom over here. Now click on edit first of all change the text so this time we we don't want this much text i'll replace it with this one because we want very little content over here and we also want to do one thing we want to make it center align so we'll select this option 
center click on save changes click on update now the reason i copied that uh, text from top is because we don't have to do this styling again this is already styled and so we are saving some time over there okay so that should be always your main purpose to save some time wherever it is possible now finally we have some space at bottom so at top we have added 60 pixels so bottom also it should be 60 pixels so let's do that very quickly so copy this 60 pixel space from top bring it at the bottom now i can do one thing i can just go ahead do everything at once then update and finally show you the website but the reason i want to i want to go a little bit slower i want to do one or two steps then refresh the page update this page refresh it over here just so that you guys understand the process if i want i if you many people complain that you can save a lot of time by doing everything once then finally going and showing that thing but in that process many people most of them are beginners they don't understand why did we use this space what was that necessary so there are many things that people don't understand that is the reason why i always do two or three steps then i update that page and i show you that result over there okay now let's add this style so in this style what is happening is uh, we have this a uh, row we have this uh, style at the bottom this dark border at the bottom we have this nice so all this styling so whenever you have over this this uh, color becomes red and all the other thing becomes white so if you want to have this styling simply go ahead select this pencil button okay edit this column and at the bottom you will see this extra class name under this just type in this simple thing fad okay select this click on save changes click on update come back over here refresh it now as you can see that styling is applied over here. you just have to type in fad over here because that is a class which is created in the theme you just have to use that class name over here and you will have all the different stylings for yourself now let's add this space at the bottom now as you can see we have a nice amount of space at bottom so we'll do one thing we'll come over here we'll click on this plus button we'll search for space now again we'll this time we'll be using this spacer section because what i want to do is i want to add 110 pixels in desktop okay and also on tablet now 110 pixels is a lot of space uh, especially on mobile phone so that is the reason why we are using this option so in portrait mode for uh, tablet i want to do only 60 this this is the landscape mode of tablet now for mobile phone i just want to add 30 pixels so as you can see we are adding different spaces for the same section so that is when you should be using this spacer section click on sa save changes then after that we have this option this divider that you see on your screen okay this divider we have a line over here we have this image in the background in, in the middle and then again we have this line so let's see how we can add this section so for that we'll click on this plus button we'll add another row we'll divide this row and we'll add, divide this under custom columns so basically you can divide one single row into 12 different columns so in this example i want to do 5 by 12 okay plus 2 by 12 okay plus 5 by 12 so as you can see numerator 5 plus 2 7 7 plus 5 12 and denominator is always 12 so you can basically divide a single row into 12 different columns now click on update now as you can see this is how your section will look like now first of all in the left hand side option in the left hand side column click on this plus button now inside this we want to add the line separator so select this line separator which is over here now weight line height will be one uh, pixels now at this time i want to make it 100 percentage okay because as you can see this is 100 percent this is covering the complete column so that is the reason why we are selecting 100 percentage over here let's change this color let's make it lighter gray color so e e e select this option then after that uh, let's add some space at top so margin top let's make it 25 okay now i can do one thing i can copy and bring this thing at the right hand side as well because left and right side are same now in the middle we just have to use this image so search for single image upload the image now this is the one select this image click on open click on set image or uh, full size image and let's make it center align okay so alignment center click on save changes now let's add the same space at bottom so i'll copy this space and i'll bring it at the bottom now click on save changes come over here refresh the page okay now as you can see this is your divider this is your space now as you can see here we have a lot of space but if you see this on a mobile phone let's see okay now as you can see here we have little space so that is the reason why we are using that option 
we can come back to the desktop okay so with this this section is also done now let's move on to our next section which is this option this products section different products that we are displaying on our website now this section is very interesting because if you see uh, once we create this section all the other section will be super easy for us because they follow the same structure if you see this section we have a subtitle main title two dividers then the content if you leave this section both the other section subtitle main title two divider content so we can simply copy paste them and we can save a lot of time you'll see that so let's create this section now come back over here go at the bottom to create a new section we know what to do simply add a new row okay now because this section does not have any uh, columns this is just a single thing it's not different columns you will see that option it is a single element so here we can just use one single row so that is exactly what we are doing now inside this first we want to add this heading okay so this is our heading so i'll click on this plus button search for heading okay select this option now alignment will be center this is our title so i'll copy it paste it over here this is our content so i'll copy it paste it over here all right now go to typography now because our, this time our title is smaller and the content is bigger so we have to design it accordingly so for the title i want to make it quite smaller 13 pixels line height of 1.5 all right and we also want to make it lighter 400 pixels okay and the color for this one will be 777 this gray color now when you scroll down we have this subtitle we have to make it bigger so 40 pixels into 1.5 and we can make it 400 okay now because this is title we will be selecting title font from here and we will be making it darker so 222 okay this color code so select this option click on save changes now after that we want some space okay we have a decent amount of space over here then this uh, divider then some space so click on this option space select this empty space let's add maybe 30 pixels over here or maybe let it be 32 no problem click on save changes then after that we can copy and paste in this line separator so i i'm not going to do that again because i have shown you multiple times i'll do it very quickly i'll bring it over here okay let's open this now we have to do one thing we just have to change the width of this one this was quite smaller 30 pixels this time we have to use it bigger one so i'll select 170 center align which is fine click on save changes we need another space of two pixels click on save changes then again we need this line separator and we just want to add this left margin of nine pixels click on save changes then again at the bottom we want some space so i'll copy and paste in this space over here at the bottom and i don't want uh, 32 i want to make it bigger so i'll select 70 pixels space now click on save changes click on update come over here refresh the page now when you scroll down as you can see this is how it will look like so similarly we can copy paste this section multiple times and it will save us a lot of time now let's add this product section so come back at the bottom click on this plus button now search for this latest auto now you have two option eight or four and five with one large we want to select this option because as you can see we are displaying one large and four different images so five with one large now slide type you can select item by date item by id whatever you want so i'm selecting item by date okay now item count we are typing five and uh, all those different models that you want to display you can tick mark that over here and you if you want to enable carousel which is if you want to have this slider option yes we want to have that carousel so you can select this option click on save changes click on update come over here refresh the page okay now as you can see it will display your auto your car and whenever you add multiple it will just keep on adding over here now let's create our next section which is uh, this one so for that again we'll come back to this page uh, go at the bottom click on this plus button add a row now inside this let's add another row because here we also we have multiple columns and i'm dividing this into three different columns because here we have first column in the middle column we have this image then we have this column okay so we are dividing this into three different columns now first of all what i want to do is i want to add some space as you can see we have some space at top so i'll do I'll, this is for the left section so i'll select this left section and search for space now i want to use this space space or section because i want different uh, number for different devices now for all the other devices that is desktop and tablet i'm selecting 100 pixels and for mobile phone i'm selecting 40 pixels okay now click on save changes 
then again if you just refresh this page you will see that this option also has animation block as you can see we have some animation so if you want to display this animation click on this plus option first add this animation block okay and inside that you can add that animation so for this example i'm selecting fade in left so you can select fade in left for this column this can be fade in uh, this image can be fade in bottom and this can be fade in right okay that will look much better now come over here select uh, now what all you want to add inside this animation thing so first we have this title another title so we have multiple headings over here so i'm selecting this first heading come over here click on this plus button search for heading select this option select this element now let's make it right align so everything over here will be right align okay so i'm selecting right align and whatever your title is so this is our title now go to typography and let's change this style very simple to 23 or line height of 1.6 not 223 just 23 and let's make it 400 okay and we also want to change the color to white color you can just type in fff because as you can see we'll be adding this image in the background and we want our text and everything to be white so i'm selecting this white color now you can click on save changes then after that we have this option this is called this is uh, actually a, a different element this is the icon box element so we'll click on this plus button search for icon box there are different options over here single icon icon box action icon box info now the one which we are using is this option icon box info select this option now first go at the top now let's, let's start from here so first of all is your title text so this is your title text your phone number whatever you want to display over here i'm copying this phone number and what what is your title text color so i'm selecting white color all right select this white color now we don't have any subtitles so we can leave that we can just go at the bottom and i can uh, where do we want to display the icon i can top or i can left so here we want to display the icon at left so we'll select i can left side now let's add the font style so i don't want to display the default font style i'll just make it off and uh, we'll we'll use uh, this option we'll have a custom style voice so for this i want to display 40 pixels so this is the size of this as you can see quite bigger text so i'm selecting 40 pixels over here and you can also have a line height of maybe 1.6 now for mobile phone you can also change control this uh, font so for mobile phone 40 pixels will be quite bigger so i can make it 20 32 pixels over here all right 32 pixels for mobile phone so this same icon will be displayed uh, in different size on mobile phone and this is title so i'm selecting title font from here now go to icon let's control the icon so first of all what what icon do you want to display we want to display this phone icon so you can search for that icon over here let's search for phone and there are many different icons so i want to use this one select this go uh, go at the bottom and for this if you want to change the color select this thing make it no and you can control the size and everything if you want and we want 50 pixels size so i'm selecting 50 everywhere and for this color again paste in the same color that we have uh, used earlier which was this one dc 2d uh, 1 3 okay paste in that color now go to margins now for the icon i'm selecting this option top i want 12 pixels margin and right hand side i want 7 pixels margin Okay, select this option click on save changes now let's add another heading over here for this text so i'll just add another heading element paste in this title this will also be right aligned because everything over here is right aligned now let's go to typography and let's make it 22 pixels and i want this to be very light so i'm selecting 200 weight color will be obviously white so just type in fff you'll get that white color now you can do one thing for tablet and phone size i want to make it 17 pixels okay both for tablet and mobile phone now click on save changes now select the first column which is this option click on this pencil button for edit this column now here also you have to go to icon uh, css class name and just type in gar click on save changes update this page come over here refresh it okay so we have all the text over here but we'll have to do some changes over here so that we can uh, display everything properly so for that we have to do some changes in the main row so here we have our main row select this pencil button now first of all we want to stretch row and content as i explained you earlier because we'll be using image in the background so whenever you do that you should always be stretching your row and also your content 
Now, when you scroll down, you will see this option parallax. Select this option and select simple parallax. Now let's upload that image. Let's see which image. So we are using this image. So let me upload it. Now this is the background image. Okay, make sure you know that. We are uploading the background image, which is this one. Select this image, click on open. Click on set image. Now go to theme options. Now here we want to add some padding. So I'm selecting padding top. This is for the row setting. Now when you scroll down, you will see this option text color. So I want text color to be white because as you can see all the text color on this uh, top of this option is white text color. So we are selecting text color white. Now for decor, we want to select this option top. Okay. Select this top. And for this option section decor color, just select color. Okay. You will get this option. So because we want to make we want to make this section like this, you know, you have this design in the background. So that is the reason why we are selecting this option. Now click on save changes. Let's see it again. Click on update. Come over here, refresh the page. Okay, now as you can see, it looks much better. We have we need some spacing, so I'll fix that thing. Once you add that image, everything will be automatically fixed. So let's add that image in the middle column. So select this uh, column. Just search for single image. If you want, again, if you want to add some animation, first add the animation block and then after that add this image. But I don't want to do that because we have seen that multiple times. I'm just adding this single image over here. So let's upload this image. So select this image, click on open. Click on set image and obviously very simple. Just make it full size image and select center align. Click on save changes, click on update. Come over here, refresh the page. Okay, as you can see, this is automatically fixed. Now for the third section, you can automatically do that because similar to this section, you can just make it like this. Okay, so you can copy paste everything and do it like this. We are not going to do that because that will take a lot of time. We have already spent a lot of time on this home page. So I want to move very quickly right now. Now let's move on to next section. Now for the next section, we can save some time. We can just copy this section product section paste over here and we can do the changes. So let's see how we can do that. So when you scroll down, go to products section, which is over here. This is our product section. Okay. Here we are, we are displaying the latest products. So I can copy this option. Now this will be duplicated at the bottom. As you can see, same column. Now bring this copied or duplicated option at the bottom. If you're not able to bring it at the bottom, you can do one thing you can make, you can bring this bottom column at top. Okay. So this will make this column at bottom. Now click on update. Let's see whether this has worked or not. Refresh the page. Now, as you can see below this, we have this column. Okay. We have this entire section. We want the title. We want the subtitle. We just don't want this product. So I'll do one thing. I'll go at the bottom and we'll just delete this product section. And instead of this, we'll add the carousel slider. Okay. Just search for that. Here it is carousel slider. Now don't have to do any changes. So here, just go to slide and just type a one everywhere. Okay. Because we want to display one one uh, testimonial in all the slides. So just type a uh, one in desktop tablet and also on mobile phone. Click on save changes because as you can see, we are displaying one single uh, testimonial on the screen. If you select three or four, you will see three different columns over here. We don't want to do that. Now let's add the testimonial inside this. So click on this plus button, search for testimonial. This is the one select this option. Now, first of all, what we have, we have the avatar. So we have to upload that image which is over here. Select this image, click on open, click on set image. Then when you scroll down, you have your name. So the name over here is whatever the name is. I'm just typing John Doe. We don't have, we are not entering any title. So under title, you can enter like CEO of this company or CMO of this company, whatever it is. Then we have this text. So let's enter this text over here and now let's design this text. So go to typography. Now for the title or for the font, uh, for the name uh, font, we are selecting 14 pixels and let's make it bolder. So 700 and let's change the color to black. Okay. Two, two, two. This will make it black. Now for the content, not the title, uh, for the content here, it is content. Okay. Let's make it 18 pixels and a line height of 1.8. And I also want to make it italic. Okay. So under font style, I'll select italic and for this color also it will be black two to two click on save changes update this page come over here refresh this page okay now as you can see you have your slider over here because we have only one uh 
uh, testimonial we cannot uh, do that carousel but if you have many you have if you have multiple you can do that okay now we can add some space at top and bottom because i think we need some space at top and bottom but if you want you can do that we are not going to do that we are we have done that multiple times now let's do one thing for the final section we want to display this uh you know this option so again we'll do one thing we'll simply duplicate this column okay this is duplicated just delete this uh carousel slider carousel and instead of this we want to display our blocks now we haven't created any blocks so first of all let's update this page let's first see how a blog is created let me first open this single blog and let's see how it how it is created so to create a new blog you can simply do one thing how or post and click on add new so let me do that in a new tab now this is the title this will be your blog title so i'll simply copy it paste it over here under title then you have your simple content whatever your content is it is basically most of the times it is just simple text so you will enter your content over here now at the right hand side you can give it a category if you're talking about a particular thing so i can just type in car category or cars category maybe click on add new category you can give some tags if you want and most importantly we have to give it a featured image so click on set featured image and this image will be your featured image so come over here select any image of your choice and this is the one we are using select this image click on open click on set featured image go at the top and publish this post okay so this is how easy it is to create a post similarly you can create multiple posts and once you have created posts now you can display them on your website so to do that click on this plus button now let's search for news block okay you'll get this option news block now we don't want any title first of all because we already have a title we are we are already giving a title let's see okay we already have this title so we don't want any additional title so i'm deleting that title now whatever categories you want to display select that then after that when you scroll down we have uh, this thing in the content just delete that we don't want any content just click on save changes update this page come over here refresh it and you will have your content at the bottom as you can see this is your section okay this is how your block section will look like as i said earlier make sure you add some space at top and bottom this is really looking bad because we don't have any space at top and bottom let me do one thing let me copy this space let's bring it at the bottom okay let me copy it again always add some space at top and bottom of every single section okay and to separate two different sections as you can see because both the colors of this section is same we can do one thing we can change the background color of one section so let me change the background color of this testimonial section click on this edit this row make sure this is stretch row okay because we are adding background color go to design option and go to background color let's make it uh, f5 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 okay click on save changes click on update come over here refresh the page okay now as you can see the color of this section is changed now this is looking so much better okay now it is looking that these two are totally different sections all right guys so with this our home page is now completed now let's see how we can create our contact page and the listing page which is very very simple this was <laughs> i can understand a little bit lengthier uh, and uh, maybe a little bit complicated for people who are doing this thing for the first time but all the other things that we have to do right now is very very easy so let's do them all right guys now let's start with the contact page first let's create the contact page and to do that from the left hand side you'll see pages how about that and click on add new now let's give it a title of contact so under title just type in contact or contact us or whatever you want so i'm just starting typing it contact us now we want this page to be full width we don't want any sidebar first of all let me just publish it so when you publish it and if you see this page in a new tab you'll see by default you have this sidebar and all we want to make it full width we don't want any sidebar so for that you will scroll down at the bottom you will see sidebar style just make it full width update this page come over here if you refresh it again that sidebar will be gone all right now we can design this page so for that click on back end editor now let me do one thing first let me open this contact page in the demo website so that we can see this page and we can design very similar page now first of all we have this title then we have the contact form so to display the title click on add element add a row inside this row click on plus button search for text block okay select this text block 
Now do one thing, uh, again I'm saying, I have say, said this multiple times that there is a link given in the video description below. When you click on that link, you will download a file and in that file you will see all the different media file for, for different medias that all the different images that you can use to create this website and you will also see these two pages or these two files contact page css and footer static block so first op open this option contact page css now here as you can see this is one thing this is another thing i have divided this with this sim sim simple line divider now copy this top two lines copy it from here and now go to your text section under your text block by default you are always under visual section go to text section delete everything from here and paste in what you have copied now click on save changes now do one thing at the left hand side you will see contact open that in a new tab because by default your contact form looks totally different we, ha we have to style that thing now click on edit now this is how your contact form looks by default i'll delete it open that file which is over here now copy this text and paste it over here click on save so once you do that come back to this page click on this big plus button add another row now inside this click on this plus button and search for contact form 7 select this option contact form 7 and just select this option which is already selected just click on save changes now click on update come back to this page and if you refresh it this is your title this is your contact form all right so the contact form looks a little bit weird maybe we have done maybe we don't have to use this option contact form 7 let's search for some other option okay we have to use this black one select this option okay now click on save changes click on update let's see this time click on refresh okay now this looks much better so you have to use this black one so with this contact form is created as i said you earlier only the home page was a little bit difficult but all the other pages are now very simple now let's create the listing page so hover over pages now click on add new you can give it any title i'll just give it a title of listings now under page layout when you scroll down under page layout this is the option we have right sidebar now in this right sidebar i want to display a particular content so under sidebar content select auto sidebar now go at the top click on publish because if you see the listings page which is over here car listings page now at the right hand side we have this option okay we have this uh, filtration option so we will be using this sidebar now if you just view this page in a new tab uh, it will be just a regular page so we have to set this page as the listing page and that is quite simple to do that you can do one thing from the left hand side you will see this autos option however that and click on settings now here as you can see car listing page just select the car listing page that you have created which was listings page select this Go at the bottom click on save changes now again if you refresh this page this is how it will look like now we need that sidebar over here so for that come back to the dashboard hover or appearance and click on widgets now if you remember we had selected auto sidebar for the sidebar so we have to add everything under auto sidebar now it is very simple under auto sidebar just add auto filter which will be oh, which is over here just drag and drop this thing over here now whatever do you want to display as the filtration so i want to display price price range time vehicle type okay body type show fuel so what all do you want to display stick mark that thing click on save if you come back to this page and refresh it at the right hand side you have your sidebar and you have different filtration options all right so this is how this thing works and with this your listing page is also done now let's create the blog page so for that again we'll hover over pages click on add new and we have already created the blog so just this is just the page so just give it a title of blog publish this page now just like home page we have to set the blog page so if you remember in the home page under appearance uh, not under appearance under settings you have this reading option we had set home page over here so similarly for blog page also we have to set this page so under post page select this blog page click on save changes and let's see the blog page let me go back to that page now this is your blog page all right so this is how it will look now let's finalize let's complete this website so only only few things are left just the header and footer is left so let's first create a menu so that we can create header and footer later on so to create a new menu or to create a menu you just have to hover appearance and click on menus you can name this menu anything i'll just name it main menu click on create menu now whatever or uh, link or whatever pages you want to display click on view all pages tick mark all those pages so i just want to display maybe these pages not the shop page 
click on add to menu and always make sure this thing is tick mark primary primary navigation now click on save menu and if you go back to your website now as you can see your menu now here we have to display the phone number like we have you know in the demo website so if you want to do that thing you can do one thing come over here and you can click on customize so under appearance you have customize option click on customize you will see this page all right so under your customize option you will see this uh, at the left hand side you have your header click on header click on elements and uh, what what do you want your button name and your button link id to be so under button name you just have to type in the text so we just want this text whatever your phone number you want to display okay you will display it like this now under button link you can type in this thing tell colon slash slash and after that enter your phone number you it should be the same phone number but without any spaces without any brackets okay now click on publish now let's see our footer because right now we don't have anything in the footer so come back now under footer you will see this option footer option select this option now under footer we have to select a block first of all let's change the copyright text let's make it uh, 2020 and instead of design by whatever i'll just type in made by Nayesh shake all right just like this now we have to select or we have to create a block i'll publish it right now i'll go back to my dashboard and let me show you how you can create a blog and you will see this option blocks option hover that and click on add new you can name it anything you want i'll just name it footer block okay now click on publish now for footer block right now we don't see that uh, option uh, wp uh, bakery page builder so i can do one thing i from the left hand side we can hover wp bakery page builder and we can select role manager now here under post type right now page is only selected select this option custom and tick mark everything especially tick mark this option static block because that is that is what i want to use now go at the bottom click on save changes now if you go back to your blocks click on blocks if you edit your footer block now you will see wp bakery option over here now again uh, the link or the file that you have downloaded has also this file footer static block copy this uh, co copy everything from here come back to your website click on text section paste everything over here now you can do one thing click on backend editor now it will display everything in this manner click on update let's see how this thing looks like first of all go to your customize option refresh this page because now we have to set this block as the footer block now select footer and under footer block select this footer block click on publish now let's go at the bottom in the footer now as you can see everything is displaying properly and if you want to change this text if you want to change this phone number this email address this timing this address obviously you can go to this block first of all is your address click on this pencil button whatever your address is instead of this address paste in your own address similarly if you want to change your email address click on this plus button or this pencil button delete this email address and enter your personal email address okay and after that you can just click on update all right guys so with this this tutorial is now completed so i hope you find this tutorial helpful if you find it helpful if you want to watch more videos like this make sure to subscribe and click on the bell icon so that whenever i upload a video you always get notified and if you like this video, make sure to give a thumbs up to this video, share this video with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, WhatsApp and different social media networks. And throughout the video, if you have any comments, any suggestions for me, if you have any doubts, you can leave them in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching guys. See you in the next video.